The authority of EU law in this country ended forever. Well, let the cheers ring out. That was at the conference last year, and virtually the same words said at Lancaster House this year in January. Leaving the EU will mean that our laws will be made in Westminster, Edinburgh, Cardiff and Belfast, and those laws will be interpreted by judges not in Luxembourg, but in courts across the country, said the Prime Minister. The only difference was they didn't break into rapturous applause. Bernard Jenkin is a Conservative MP, also chairs the Public Administration and Constitutional Affairs Committee. He joins me now. Mr Jenkin, can you help drill down to what exactly we mean by the word direct? Good morning to you. Well, we're going to have... Um, good morning, and, and lovely to have somebody from the University of Essex from my constituency. Oh, good. No, we worked it out specially uh, for you, Bernard. <laughs> thank you very much. But um, um, we are simply normalising our relationship with the European Union. And um, the, the big question is whether the EU is going to insist on something much more pungent in terms of our relationship with the European Court. Those other European countries you refer to are all countries that have, have either aspired or do aspire to join the European Union. So they want to be under the European Court of Justice. We're leaving. So we want the same kind of relationship with the European Court of Justice as, say, the United States, as uh, Canada, which has done a trade deal with the EU, for example, and, and we can have that. Um, and I think there's a, there's a lot of confusion here. Um, a Supreme Court, like our Supreme Court, looks at what the Supreme Court in the United States does, looks at what the International Court of Justice does and other international tribunals. Um, no, no national Supreme Court operates in total legal isolation, but we're going to have a normal nation-to-nation -nation type relationship with the EU, like the EU has with other countries. Much of this is played out at a fairly lofty level, but for yeah. existing <laughs> arrangements, for my listeners, such as, and we are in prime holiday season, if their flights yeah. are delayed, I think, for more than three hours, or something, under a European court diktat, they get their money back or they get a percentage thereof or whatever. I mean, what, what happens, and I appreciate this is low-hanging fruit here, but what happens to matters such as that for my listeners? Well, well we're, we're keeping... Um, at the beginning, we're going to carry all the EU law into UK law. So those rights will be expressed in UK statute law instead of EU law. We're keeping all the rights like that. Mm. It does seem, lastly, no, for I'm many people back. who voted Brexit, they're going to be feeling concerned. If not, I might even use the word betrayed this morning, Mr Jenkins. No, no. Because well, they are, because I'm reading the emails. Oh, <laughs> Well, um, it's because of the way that this is being portrayed. Actually, this is a very, very big change. At the moment, the European Court of Justice and the direct um, application of European law can mean um, our own courts can strike down acts of Parliament. So what Parliament has decided to do can be ruled illegal and struck down and inapplicable in our own land by our own courts as a result of our relationship with the European Court of Justice. That is what is ending. That is a very big constitutional change. Always good speaking with you, Bernard Jenkins. Thank you, Conservative MP, and you chair the Public Administration and Constitutional Affairs Committee. Well, much has been said about the position of the Justice Department. Let's speak with someone who's a former Justice Secretary and former Secretary of State for Constitutional Affairs, serving under Tony Blair, formerly Charlie now Lord Faulkner, who joins me now. Uh, Lord Faulkner, Vince Cable says that we're effectively seeing a long overdue climb down. The other side are saying, no, 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 this is always going to happen all along. What's the reality here? I think the reality is that if you enter into agreements with the European Union, for example, on air traffic, and you gave a very good example, what about delays on air traffic? Yeah. If the provisions that govern what your rights are in relation to that are not as a result of local law, but as a result of an agreement reached with the European Union, which will still be the position after we've left the European Union, then you need some court that isn't a British court and isn't a European Union court that determines what your rights are. And you can't enter into agreements with the European Union, for example, about air travel, for example, about citizenship, for example, about what budget repayments we're going to be making, without there being some court that will resolve disputes relating to that. And the government finally, in this paper, and I haven't read it, but it, the, the, the sort of Dominic Raab stuff on the radio this morning, although he's trying to put a spin in it, appears to be accepting you need some court that isn't a British court, that isn't a European Union court, that resolves disputes. So when Mrs May and that 
fabulous quote you got from the party conference said it's only going to be English courts that now decide them. She was talking rubbish. Yeah. And she was creating expectations that could never be delivered if the position is that we as a country want to enter into agreements with the European Union about trade, about budget, about air travel, about the quality of medicines, about whether or not For example, you need a passport to go through customs. All of these things are about agreements with a foreign country or the European Union, and they need to be resolved by a court that's got power over both. And that's finally what the government is facing up to, I suspect, in this document that's coming out today. So much for her, quote, red lines, Lord Faulkner. That appears, I mean, that's right, and it's very damaging because ultimately she's created a huge amount of expectation that's going to leave people bewildered and indeed uh, the debate that you've just had I would imagine is quite bewildering for your viewers but if we're going to say for example that you, some European Union citizens who live here can stay here on certain terms then somebody's got to be able to resolve whether or not the agreement we enter into with the European Union on that is being complied with in individual cases and that's going to need a court, there's not a British court not an EU court but something above it Lastly, there's another Sorry, Sorry, Charlie. Oh. Lastly, uh, Labour's shadow Brexit Secretary, Sir Keir Starmer, talks about the importance of the word direct. Lord Faulkner, how do you yeah. interpret in this context the word direct? Well, the, the, I, I construe direct meaning that ECJ decisions wouldn't have an immediate impact on a dispute between individuals or between an individual and the UK. But what regulations mean, what agreements mean, are going to be very affected by the ECJ's views on that. So it's going to have a very significant indirect impact on what our laws mean. Always good speaking with you. Thank you. Formerly Charlie, now Lord Faulkner, former Justice Secretary, you served as Secretary of State for Constitutional Affairs under Tony Blair.